In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create cinematic videos using Kling. To create this video, I collaborated with Kevin Cardoza, also known as Kevin the Kid. He's one of the most talented AI filmmakers in the world, and he's also the instructor of our advanced AI filmmaking course. So over the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at how to get maximum cinematic qualities from your AI videos using Kling. Let's get started. So as an illustration for this tutorial, I put together a quick little scene. Let's take a look. Man, we've all been there. Okay, so that's the example that we're working towards. Let's hop into the tutorial. So of course, it all starts with our character. And for our example, I'm going to use this image of this woman. Of course, you can use any character you want. And the cool thing is with the techniques that I'm going to show you today, you'll get consistent characters, clothing, and environments. So we have our character. Now we wanna focus on the cinematic color grading and style from the images that we want to create. Now, of course, you could go in and curate a board and work inside of tools like Midjourney to fine tune the images to be exactly what you're looking for. But for our example, I'm going to make it super easy. Essentially, I came across this image and I really like the color grading style. So next up, it's time to create the images. Now there is an image generator directly inside of Kling, but it's not quite as intelligent as the image generator that I'm going to show you inside of this video. So I like making the images in other tools and then bringing them into Kling to animate them and ultimately create your videos. So the tool that I'm going to be using is called Nano Banana, but if you wanna learn more about creating images or getting consistent styles from your images, be sure to click the link below this video to check out our video on consistent characters. So I'm going to use the online platform FreePick to use Nano Banana, and we'll go ahead and go to generate image. So first things first, make sure under model you're on Google and then Nano Banana. Let's go ahead and bring in both of those images. So again, we have our character and then we have our color grading style. We'll drag and drop them into the image reference section. And for our prompt, we'll say a cinematic close-up of at image one, that's the image that has our character, wearing a linen dress sitting outside an Italian cafe in Positano. Use the same color grading and filmic style as image number two. And we'll go down here and make sure that we're going to create four images in 16 by nine and go ahead and click generate. So after just a few seconds, we have quite a few images here. So let's take a look. So these are already looking pretty darn good. You can see each one is uniquely different. I don't like her looking at the camera quite as much, but I do think there's a lot of things that I do like about some of these images. We'll work our way through here. And I really like this image. I like the details on the cup. The composition's interesting, and I like that she's looking forward. So we'll go ahead and go to the export button, make sure we're set to PNG, and go ahead and select download. So now it's time to create the reverse shot. So what is she looking at? So the cool thing is inside of FreePick, you can, of course, upload the image like we did earlier. But if you created your image directly inside of FreePick, you can just drag and drop it directly in the image references section, which is a pretty fun hack. Okay, so now let's type in our prompt. This one's a bit longer. So what I said is show the reverse shot from the woman's perspective of a guy drinking coffee, use the same color grading as the image one, which is the only image that we uploaded. The guy should have the reverse angle of Positano with the homes on the cliff on the left side of the frame, as this is, of course, a reverse shot. So let's go ahead and click generate. 
So this is our first image here and yeah, it really knocked it out of the park. That's exactly what we're looking for. Let's take a look at a few other images here. So we have this one, which basically replaced the woman. So not really what we're looking for. We have this shot here, not exactly what we're looking for. And then we have this shot here again, it replaced her. So not exactly what we're looking for. So you can see it's sometimes about iteration, but we actually got lucky with the very first generation being exactly what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and download that to our computer. Okay. So I'm going to spare you the back and forth. Essentially we used the exact same process to create each one of the shots for our scene. So now that we have our images, it's now time to up res them. So there are a few different tools out there that can help you with the up resing process. We've tested all of them and I really feel like Topaz Gigapixel is still the best tool on the market. To use the tool, all you have to do is take your image, drag and drop it into Gigapixel. And from here, there are a few different options. You can see we have standard, high fidelity, and low res. I'm going to go ahead and select high fidelity. And from here, there's a bunch of advanced settings. I like turning them all the way down because I don't want to have any extra denoising or artifacting happening to our images. I want them to look as natural as possible. And for the upscale factor, I'm going to set it to times four. You can, of course, multiply it to whatever number you want. But of course, once you start getting too high, the images are just simply too large. So you can see here with the before and after, if you see the before super pixelated and then after it has a lot more realistic details. So there's just a lot more individual details with the hair strands, the eye looks much more realistic and you can even see some texturing in the hat. So it's doing a really, really good job. So when you're ready to save your image on your computer, go ahead and click export image. So you'll do the exact same thing for all of the images inside of your sequence. Okay, now comes the fun part. It's time to animate our images. Of course, you can go over to the Kling platform and animate your images directly inside of Kling, which is awesome. I'm actually going to continue to use free pick here simply because we already have credits to the platform and there's an API that connects Kling directly inside of free pick. So it's a great back and forth process directly here on the platform. So in order to create a video inside of free pick, we're going to go to the generate video button here. Let's go ahead and bring in one of our images. I really like this image here of her making this like grossed out face. So we'll go ahead and drag and drop that into the start image section. And for our prompt, we'll say a woman looks at the camera, confused and grossed out, looking around, looking back at the camera. And we'll also say handheld camera shake. I like defining what camera movements I want to see if I have specific things that I'm looking for. Now for the duration, we're going to set this to 10 seconds, basically just giving us more time and it allows us to pick and choose the exact few seconds that work for the shot that we're working with and go ahead and click generate. And after a few minutes, we have this shot here, which honestly looks pretty good. You can kind of feel the sense that she's really grossed out from the shot. So I think that Kling did a really good job. Now, does Kling get it right every single time? Absolutely not. You definitely will have to generate multiple times for most of the shots inside of your films. Let me just show you a quick example of that. So basically I wanted this guy to rub his hand through his hair and then lick his hand and be grossed out. And uh, we tried getting that a few different times. And so we have this shot here. He rubs his hand and then he licks it, but he kind of just like bites his hand. So that's definitely not what we're looking for. Uh, we have this shot here, he rubs his hair. He also looks like an Oompa Loompa. I think the color grading changed. And then, I don't know, the dynamics on that tongue is just like really off. And then we have this shot here. He touches his head and then he like licks his fingers and he's like grossed out. I don't know. It's just very off-putting and weird. <laughs> so a lot of those shots are not exactly what we're looking for. It's a back and forth process. You'll create a video, adjust your prompt. It's going to take you probably five generations on average to get exactly what you're looking for. So now that you have your shots, it's time to up res them. So by default, they're going to be in 1080p, but you need to up res them into 4K or beyond if you're working on a more professional project. And the tool that I like to use to up res my videos is Topaz Video AI. So let's go ahead and take that shot here of the woman 
damage just really grossed out here and we'll drag and drop that into Topaz Video AI. And under the output resolution here, we'll set it to 4K. And under the model, we'll set it to Proteus, which is the default model. Honestly, it does a pretty good job and we'll turn down recover detail to zero. We're not going to adjust any of the other settings and you can go ahead and go to the quick export button in the bottom right to export it to your machine. So after a few minutes, you'll have all of the shots on your computer and now it's time to edit them all together inside a video editing application. I like using Adobe Premiere Pro, but of course DaVinci Resolve is another fantastic option if you're looking for a professional tool to edit all of the video clips. So I have an incredibly simple timeline here. You can see we have our shots. We also have a music track that I downloaded online. And then we also have some sound effects. Now, one tip that I like to use whenever I am working with AI video footage is to apply a very simple film grain to my timeline. This helps everything to just feel a bit more realistic. You don't wanna go overboard, but just a little bit goes a long way. So I went ahead and pasted our film grain into the timeline. You can see we have the film grain over our video footage. So I have the grain selected in track two here, but you'll see that it's gray. Basically when we play it back, there's the grain, but there's you know nothing that you can see underneath. So what we're going to do is change the blend mode to overlay. And then I'm going to turn down the opacity below 50%. So for this one, I'm going to do 42%. I recommend playing around with it to dial it into the exact grain amount that you're looking for. I really think less is more when you're working with grain. A lot of times people will just set it to 100% and it really comes across as a little too grungy in my opinion. So now that you have everything in your timeline, you can go in and finesse the shots. This is your shot to, of course, adjust the sound design. You can add in different music. You have the ability to match the color grading, which can be very helpful for helping to sell the overall realism of your scene. And once you're done, you can export your project. So there you go. That's how to create realistic and cinematic AI video footage inside of Kling. Of course, if you want to learn the latest AI filmmaking techniques, be sure to check out our AI filmmaking and advanced AI filmmaking courses over at Curious Refuge. We train artists at every major studio, and we would love to have you inside our community. And of course, you can always like and subscribe here on YouTube to get the latest AI film news and tutorials directly here on the platform. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions at all, be sure to ask in the comments. Comments. Best of luck on all of your creative projects.